This is part two of my Accumulate Field intro tutorial. Be sure to watch the first video in this series. You can check it out here. We're going to be jumping in from where we left off. So here we go. One of the features of the Accumulate Field node is the Group Index. This allows us to create multiple groups of items to be tallied separately. When the Group Index is a single value, all of the items coming into the value get summed up together. But if we were to pass in some of the items with a group index of zero and some items with a group index of one, they would be tallied up separately. Both tallies starting from either zero in the trailing sense or the first value in the leading sense. This way we can make multiple piles using the same accumulate field. Let's check how we could do that with this pile of boxes. Let's say I wanted two piles with the ability to split the boxes in between each pile. An easy way to do this would be to compare each value's index, and then if it's greater or less than a given value, put it in one pile or the other. Let's see how we'd do that. Since I want to deal with an index, I'm going to use an input index. And I want to compare that index to another value. So I'll use a utility compare. Now I'd simply plug the index into the A value and plug the Boolean result output into my accumulate field. When a Boolean value is plugged into an integer value or a float value, it returns zero when false and one when true. So now, depending on the output of my greater than node, I'll have either zero or one as a group index. Let's go ahead and increase this to five. Now you've probably noticed that our stack got shorter, but we didn't get two stacks. Going into side view, I'm gonna go to wireframe mode. I found our other boxes, they're inside of our original ones. The reason for this is that our accumulate field is only adjusting the Z component of our position. Our X and Y positions are still zero for every box. So we're gonna need to change those as well. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna use the results of my compare to drive the X component of my position. That means each stack of boxes will either be at zero or one along the X axis. So now when I adjust my greater than value, my boxes shift from one pile to the other. If I wanted to, I could drag this socket to my group input. Now you'll notice that this is coming through as a float value and our indexes are integers. It would be a good idea to remove this line, change this mode to integer and reconnect these up. I'll go into my end panel and get rid of this first B value and rename it to split. Because we're using a greater than and our indexes start at zero, when we have a split of zero, we're getting one box on this side. If I were to change this to greater than or equal to, now I have no boxes on this side when it's zero. And if my split is greater than my count, then all the boxes are in the other pile. Let's clean this up a little bit. All right, there we go. So now we have two piles. We can adjust how many items are in each pile using our split. In the next video, we're gonna look at how we can use some things other than boxes and make them work for us. I hope you're enjoying this new tutorial series. I hope it's giving you some great ideas and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.